To recite a quote from Warren Buffett, diversification is protection against ignorance. Diversification is a protection against ignorance. We think diversification is, as practiced generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. So with that being said, let me explain to you exactly what cryptos I hold in my portfolio and how I was able to turn $1,000 into over $250,000 in less than a year. Let's dive deep. So I mean, if you want to make sure that nothing bad happens to you relative to the market, you own everything. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that, that is a perfectly sound approach for somebody who, who does not feel they know how to analyze businesses. If you know how to analyze businesses and value businesses, it's crazy to own 50 stocks or 40 stocks or 30 stocks probably. Taking a look at my current portfolio structure, 50% belongs to Cadena. 25% to Bitcoin, 7.5% to Luna, 7.5% to Flux, 10% to Low Cap Gems. I need to help explain why my portfolio is diversified the way it is because over diversification is a bad thing. Here is a quick quiz. What do you think is more likely to be popular in 2050? A Coca-Cola, a project that's remained popular for over 100 years and the underlying product has pretty much remained the same for a majority of that duration? or Snapchat, a project that's been popular for 10 years and the underlying product changes often. The answer is quite obvious. When Warren Buffett is looking for investments with a sustainable, competitive advantage, he is looking for consistency. Consistently growing earnings, consistently low spending and compatible expenditures and R&D, consistent profitability, and consistently low debt. Blockchain technology is still at its infancy stage. So due to a lack of regulations, we currently don't have the ability to analyze a blockchain earning report. So this is how I estimate the value that a crypto project may or may not have in the future. Cadena is the only scalable layer one proof of work blockchain in the entire industry. Each one of these layer one blockchains that you see here on the screen created their blockchains with the intentions of solving the blockchain trilemma every one of them has failed. If we take the total value of each big layer one project at its peak, we can get a general idea of what the value of a layer one blockchain would be if they could have figured out how to solve the blockchain trilemma. If we were to add up all of the big layer one projects, Solana, Ethereum, Luna, AVAX, Kronos, Elgo, Cosmos, Near, Phantom, we would get a value of roughly 700 and $31 billion. So now that we fully understand that over diversification is a bad thing, asset number one being Cadena. Currently, Bitcoin has a market cap of $737 billion. We can see what the value of Cadena would be if Cadena had a market cap today of $737 billion. That would give us potentially a 615X from its current position. Asset number two, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a bank. Bitcoin is a savings account. To me, Bitcoin is not an investment. Now, this one actually took me a minute to wrap my head around. In order to explain what I mean by this, I need to play a quick little clip by Michael Saylor. What do you want to own? You want to own the, the apex property in cyberspace that's universally desirable to everybody. And then you want to loan it out to them for the number of seconds that they want to use it and then snatch it back at no cost or one Satoshi. And you can build things on top of it. One thing you can build on top of it is, uh, is a checking account and a savings account. There's every single month for the past 13 months, there have been fundamental developments in the space that have made it a better idea. When I stopped looking at Bitcoin like an investment and started looking at Bitcoin like a bank, that's when everything changed. Bitcoin makes up about 25% of my portfolio. When I buy Bitcoin, I'm under the impression that I'm never going to sell it. Bitcoin is my savings account. Bitcoin is my rainy day fund. Bitcoin is my reserve asset. Bitcoin is my fail safe. Asset number three, Luna. Luna has created the holy grail of stable coins. Because it is not pegged to any fiat currency and the Luna Foundation is now buying Bitcoin to back the value of Luna, I would say that Luna slash UST will have the biggest impact on global real world adoption and Luna is also going to play a monumental role in preventing any corrupt government from creating their own CBDC, central bank digital currency. We do not want one, I guarantee you that. The last thing that we want is a stablecoin that is supported or backed by any government or organization. Luna's UST is the only legit stablecoin that is algorithmic and is not backed by any fiat currency or any crypto asset, making it one of my favorite assets. If I would have been able to get into Luna earlier, Luna would definitely make up more than 7.5% of my portfolio, but because I'm late to the party, I gotta make up for lost time. Asset number four, Flux. 
Flux is Web3. Because we have saw Web3 projects like ICP launch with a $57 billion market cap, we can obviously see that the demand for scalable Web3 applications is present. AWS makes up for 65% of Amazon's yearly revenue. In 2020, AWS generated $45 billion. In 2021, AWS generated $63 billion. The second key factor is the fact that Flux replicated Amazon's AWS in a decentralized way. Flux is now providing the same decentralized cloud infrastructure that Amazon provides to its customers, but Flux is doing it for free, and Flux is now taking legacy business from Amazon AWS. If we take a look at ICP's current market cap and apply that to Flux, you would see that the value of Flux would be around $15.13. That means that it's a 10x potential. Now, if we apply BNB's market cap, which as of today is 55 billion, we also know that ICP had a $57 billion market cap when they first launched. Because we know that the demand for Web3 applications is present, we know that Flux has no issues when it comes to scaling. They provide top level customer service and they are the world's most decentralized blockchain. I would have to assume that five years from now, Flux market cap should be around 55 billion, which would give Flux a a price point of around $275, giving it a 190x gain from its current price point. And last but not least, 10% of my portfolio is set on the sidelines for stable coins and 100x moonshots. If you notice the first clip with Warren Buffett, when Warren Buffett made it very clear, if you do proper research, you don't need to over diversify your portfolio. When you're going to play, and you do the proper research and you find the asset that you're gonna believe in and you see the long-term potential in a project, go big. So I don't need to diversify my portfolio into a hundred different assets. I keep enough dry powder on reserves in case price comes down. That is also why Bitcoin makes up a majority of my portfolio and Bitcoin is my savings account. Mentally, I say that I'm never gonna to touch the assets because when I buy Bitcoin, mentally, I wanna know that I'm never selling it. I wanna make sure that any asset or any dollars that I put into Bitcoin, I can potentially leave them there for life and not look back at it. I want Bitcoin to be my store of value, but at the same time, if I need to and the market dumps down or anything crazy happens, I have Bitcoin as my reserve assets. I can sell a little, invest it into a moonshot. When that moonshot goes up and does a 10, 20, 30X, I take those profits and I put it back into Bitcoin. So this is just how I break down my portfolio. Thank you guys. Can't wait to see you guys next video. Peace.